look like you need the pain pill. Hi, I'm Dean Bushmiller with Expanding Security. The pain pill is every week for three minutes to find one thing that can make us more secure, make us better at our job, or our job better for us. This week, you can go to our penetration testing class by going to the bit.ly pain pill 38 link. Hey, a commercial for you. We're ready for the 2012 exam. We've been ready for a long time. They're upgrading to metrics and all sorts of other good stuff in the CISSP, the MP, and the AP. We're ready. Come to class. Also, we help write the version 7 certified ethical hacker exam. So come to our classes because we might be able to help you get to your exam goals. Okay, the subject this week is pen testers. Jail, it happens. Oh, yeah. Well, Here's the thing, your job is to attack networks for hire. That's illegal some places. Eventually, somebody's going to call the police and the police gonna, are going to view you as a tester as a real threat, a credible threat to somebody. That tester is going to be arrested. Your job's just changed from one of attacking networks to getting out of jail and definitely staying out of prison. Remember, jail is where you go when you're waiting for the judge and prison is where you go when you're convicted. So let's talk about this from the company side. You really don't want to hire the wrong vendor or the wrong person or a criminal out there. You don't want to support criminal activity or defend criminal activity. And what I'm asking you to do as penetration testers is stay out of jail by talking to that company and getting permission up front. The company wants to hire professionals that know how to deal with the legal system and all the different jurisdictions of where the test sits. On the penetration tester side, we have to remember that users might panic. They might think that this social engineering attack is an attack against their identity. They might call their local sheriff, somebody that they know, and say, hey sheriff, go out and arrest this guy because I found out where his IP address is and I know his name. The sheriff might think, well, identity theft, that's pretty close to cyber stalking or something else that's bad, and they're going to come out. You as a penetration tester don't know, but you need to be ready. Let's first prepare the company. On the policy side of things, get the education in place and make sure that the employee signs off on it. Don't make it sign this and don't pay any attention to it, but really tell them what's going on, including telling them that the test is going to happen. You want to make sure that they know that they're not in trouble for failing the test, that is the employees. And you, when you're doing this for your company and setting the scope, narrow that scope to things like company-only assets, like the accounts and email addresses that are owned by the company. If you want to extend that out, it could be to public free accounts or publicly available information. Don't make it any wider than that unless you've really got consent from your employees. Now let me be clear about this. I do not provide legal advice. I'm not an attorney. I don't want pl don't play one on TV. Do your homework. Talk to your legal counsel. And I want to thank Bruce for telling me what I should be saying here to you as far as the legal community is concerned. That doesn't mean that Bruce is your attorney either. Prepare, okay? How do I prepare as a tester? Well, I retain an attorney. And that attorney, I explain what my business is and get a letter that's going to be dated and notarized so that that attorney says, I am the legal counsel of record. And if you change legal counsel, get that updated. Now, what you want to do is you also want to in interact with the tester, the company. You want to get a letter and say that the company is required to represent you in matters relating directly to and as a result of testing. So if somebody at their company tries to sue you, the company comes back and says, hey, you're really suing the company at this point, and did you pay attention to the fact that we told you that we're, there was going to be a test? Now the rest of this letter is going to be the scope, but remember the permission is one thing, but also getting protected by that company is another in case there are third party issues. Okay. So now let's ask what happens. What happens when you do get arrested? Well, probably your laptop's going to be seized. Your data is going to be used as evidence against you. And you might even be on TV. And this is not the good kind of TV. This is the bad kind of TV. It's called the perp walk. Okay, so how much could this cost you? Well, it might be a night or a weekend in jail. It could be your shoelaces and your belt. I know that's kind of weird, but it's the truth of it. You're also going to have to pay some sort of court cost and attorney's fees. That's all part of the bad part of being a penetration tester, the part that you have to pay for. So I have a couple of suggestions before you get arrested. 
Do your work in private. Don't do it in a public place. Make sure that you have filed copies of those letters on you at all times and with somebody else. Also, don't commingle the test data that you have. If you're processing one customer's data, it looks like a legitimate test. If you're processing two or more customers' data, it makes you look like a bot herder. Now, what happens after you get arrested? Well, first off, ask for the warrant and don't say anything. Be polite and cooperative. Shut up and lawyer up so that you can protect yourself. Your lawyers, lawyers will handle this. That's what you pay them for. You can get more. Hey, by the way, we're in Pen Testing Magazine. You can go to Pain Pill on YouTube or you can sign up at expandingsecurity.com forward slash pain pill. This week on Friday at 12.30 Central Time, you can go to our class about penetration testing. You can get there by going to bit.ly pain pill 38 five minutes before and signing up. And hopefully you don't need a pain pill until next week.